In this video, we want to go ahead and fix the issue of when I drop the item, like so, and close the inventory and reopen it, the items are still showing in the inventory. Now, we're not actually calling from our inventory component drop item. So we're not actually removing it from our inventory. We're just removing it from the widget. Well, we're not actually even doing that. We're clearing the widget, but whenever we open it back up again to view the inventory, it's getting re-added. And that's because we're not actually removing it, the item from the array. What we need to do is open up our item, go to our on click for the uh, drop item button, and we're just going to go ahead and get our character. So get player character. Again, we're just doing this in Blueprint for now. We're going to go ahead and cast it. Actually, there's no reason. reason. Yeah, we could move this over, I guess. So we'll probably end up doing that later. We're going to go ahead and cast our Blueprint character. We're going to get our inventory component. And from there, we call drop item. Make sure you call the drop item. That's part of the inventory component. And then we just pass in the item we're trying to drop. So this is going to cause an issue. So when I drop the item, I click that guy, and I click this guy. And we have this little breakpoint here. So I'm running with the debugger for this reason so I can show you. It says, do not directly call event functions and interfaces. Call execute underscore drop instead. So that's what it automatically generated, and we're calling drop directly, even though drop is now part of that interface. So we have a slight issue, so we want to fix that, because other, obviously that's just going to crash it. So I'm going to go ahead and close, and reopen the inventory. As you can see, we still have that first one. So if I hit play again, and pick it up, we just have one item, I click it, and it's still there. But we didn't crash, or we didn't hit any exceptions or anything like that either. Why is that? Well. If we look at our if statement right here in our inventory component, if found index, well, sorry, we're setting found index to equal the index that the item is found at. Well, what if that index is the very first one of the array? Well, that would be zero. So the very first item we pick up still stays there. So that index is zero. And as you can tell, if zero, that's going to make this if statement false. That's like saying if false but anything bigger than that is going to be true. So if we hover over our find function, well, the find function that they provided us, we see it index none is returned. So returns if index of the found, in, yeah, index of the found element, index none otherwise. So that means if we don't find it, it's not going to return zero. It's, it's going to return something else. It's going to return whatever they defined. So we're going to remove this line from the if statement and move it out. Then we're going to simply check if found index does not equal index underscore none. So this means if it finds it, even at, you know, element zero, it'll be, we'll, we'll still have that value. So we'll have it as zero. We'll just have to change the condition so that it actually runs the what's inside the if statement. Now, moving on to that breakpoint that we hit. We have our interface drop, and it said to call execute instead. Well, if we just do this, we can see we have execute drop, for example, and then it takes in a parameter. So that parameter would be the item, so pretty much the item we want to drop it on. But the way we're going to want, yeah, the way we want to go about doing this is we want to do i pick up interface colon colon as if you're calling a static function execute drop. And then for the parameter, we pass in the item we want to call it on. So because we want to call execute drop on the item we're trying to drop, we pass in that item. So I'm going to control S and live coding should work just fine, I hope. Let's give it a try. We pick up those two items, click it, click it, no crash. I press close, open the inventory again, and there's no items. So that has fixed our issue. Great. Uh, let's see, the other thing we wanted to do was when we actually click the item, we want to remove it. So we want to remove it from our inventory. 
So that's going to be, we want to have a way to remove a specific, uh, what do you call it, widget. So if we look at our widget, or sorry, our wrap box, and we search for remove, we have remove item, and that takes in an item from an array. What I was intending, let's see, there's a, there's a different remove. Ah, remove child. So this takes in, that would be like this widget here. So it compares. So what we can do is let's create a new function. Let's call it remove item. And it's going to take in a parameter. The parameter is going to be w underscore item object reference. Let's just call it item. So we're going to get our wrap box. We're going to call remove child, and we're going to pass an item to the content. So we don't need to do anything else. That should take care of it. But now we need a way to call it because our item doesn't know what our inventory really is. At least I don't think. So I'm actually kind of curious. So is there a get owner? There is not. So what we're going to do is create so it just holds a reference to our inventory. So let's just do, we'll get a name called inventory for the variable. Let's change it to w underscore inventory. It's going to be an object reference, instance editable, and expose it on spawn. So now we go back to set up inventory. For the create widget, let's refresh. You can see it takes in the inventory. So we can just do self because we're the inventory right now. So we're just passing ourselves to the item so it knows what it is. And from there, we drag our inventory out. And all we have to do is call remove item. And for the item, we're going to pass in self. Let's see what happens. Click it, and it's gone. Click it, and it's gone. Let's click all of them. Click, 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 click. They all gone, they all drop, they're not reappearing, and they're out of our inventory entirely. So, we are done. Now let's go over quickly what we have done here. So, in our item, whenever we click drop, what we're doing now is we're calling our drop item function that's in our inventory component. So that would be this guy right here. Inside of that, we check, we try to find the item using a function provided for us already, using, well, find, obviously. We make sure that it does have a valid index, meaning the item has been found. Then we check if it implements the interface to drop. If it does, we simply call drop item, from, well, drop item, on, yeah, drop on that item, and then we're, we remove it from the index. Now there's something we can do to improve this because currently we're actually calling drop twice on the item. We only need to do that actually once. So we can remove, well, because we're doing it right here, so we can remove this call to drop and just plug that right in, move everything over, and it should work all the same. Just like so. And it's out of our inventory. Now the reason for that is because we're calling through our interface, we're calling drop. So we're calling it like this. So we use the interface, we call execute, then the name of the function. So if you, we, uh, if we look here, we have other functions too, like you have get item name. And these are all actually specific. So anything with execute in it. So we have execute drop and execute get item name. If we look at the interface, those two are blueprint native events, which make us call uh, the execute version of the function. Because normally we can just call, you know, if it wasn't, we could just call drop just like so. Well, sorry, not like that, but uh, just like we did before, interface, drop, and that's it. But if you recall right from the beginning of this video, that calls an issue. So we have to go this route. Then all we do is we simply remove the item from the array because we are done with it. It's no longer in our inventory or anything like that. So we have our drop for our drop function set up 
and working just like we want. Now the only thing we have to do now is we can actually, so we've been going on for 10 minutes, we can take this and move it actually right into the drop. Let's see, where's the interactable? Right into this drop function if we wanted to. Because we are going to actually uh, place out in front. But I'm going to choose to leave it like so, where we call drop item through the inventory component. And that calls drop on itself if it removes it. And here we want to also move item in front of player. And that's it. So let's see. So when we pick up the item and I drop it, so let's say I'm looking right here. I want the object to be right here. I don't want it to go back to its previous position over here. So that's something we're going to have to work on in the next video. So we are pretty much done with our inventory aside from that, is, unless I think of something later. But anyhow, we are done with this video now. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description. And in that, if you pay $10 or more, I have a series dedicated just to Patrons where we create Team Deathmatch inside of Unreal Engine using C++, along with a couple other miscellaneous features. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord. That is also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out the best I can. And as always, I will see you in the next video.